Summary of the Rivals by Richard Sheridan On the streets of Bath, Fag and Thomas, two slaves, run into each other. Thomas reveals that his master, Sir Anthony Absolute, made a sudden decision to bring his entire household to town on the spur of the moment. As a joke, Fag tells Thomas that he no longer works for the younger Absolute and that Ensign Beverly is now his boss. In order to win over Lydia Languish, the beautiful young heiress, Absolute has taken on the role of an ensign. Lucy has bought some books for Lydia's lover, and Lydia and Lucy talk about them in Lydia's dressing room. They are shocked when Lydia's cousin Julia walks in. She just got to bath with her guardian, Sir Anthony. Lydia quickly tells her cousin what's going on, she wasn't able to talk to her lover, Beverly, after her guardian, Mrs. Malaprop, found out about their relationship. Mrs. Malaprop doesn't think her niece would be good with an ensign. At the same time, Mrs. Malaprop is privately writing to Sir Lucius, an Irish baronet. Julia can't believe Lydia really wants to marry a poor ensign, but Lydia is set on doing it and will lose two-thirds of her wealth in the process. Julia thinks this is silly, but Lydia makes fun of Julia's fiancé Falkland for being silly and jealous. Julia says that Falkland's bad mood is caused by his love for her and his doubts about whether he deserves her. Later, Sir Anthony comes to see Mrs. Malaprop, and the two of them scold Lydia for being interested in Beverly. Sir Anthony says that reading is to blame for a girl being so disobedient. He says that girls shouldn't be able to read or write, and Mrs. Malaprop talks about the subjects that girls should be able to study in a way that sounds like she is trying to be intellectual but is just plain silly. Sir Anthony wants to marry Lydia and Absolute, and the two men talk about how to get the young people to agree to the match. After Sir Anthony leaves, Mrs. Malaprop thinks about her relationship with Sir Lucius and worries about how Lydia may have learned about it. She asks Lucy if she told Lydia, but Lucy says no. After that, Mrs. Malaprop gives Lucy one more letter for Sir Lucius. When Lucy is alone, she thinks about how much money she's made by delivering letters for all these lovers and how, even though she pretended to be simple, she told Mrs. Malaprop about Lydia and Beverly's relationship and made Sir Lucius think he was writing to Lydia instead of her elderly aunt. Absolute and Fag have a meeting to figure out how to keep Sir Anthony from finding out that Absolute is dating Lydia while he is pretending to be Beverly. When Falkland comes in, he tells Absolute that he should ask Mrs. Malaprop and his father for Lydia's hand in marriage. But Absolute isn't sure that Lydia will agree to marry him once she knows that he's rich and that it's not an act of resistance. Meanwhile, Falkland has been very angry. He says it's because he worries about Julia when they're not together. Absolute tells him that Julia is fine and in bath, and then he talks him into staying to hear what Akers, their country neighbor, has to say about her. Akers walks in and tells them that Julia has been healthy and that she is nice to everyone she meets. Falkland freaks out and leaves in a rage. Akers tells Absolute about his silly efforts to look more stylish while he's courting Lydia. Absolute doesn't know about Akers' relationship with Lydia. A little while later, Sir Anthony shows up and tells Absolute that he wants to marry off his son to make him rich. But Sir Anthony won't say who the woman is because he thinks Absolute owes him complete respect. If Absolute tells his father that he's already in love and can't follow orders, the father swears at him and walks off. Lucy brings Sir Lucius a letter from Delia at the same time. He is still sure that Delia is Lydia, Sir Lucius. Fag has seen everything, and when Sir Lucius leaves, he threatens to tell Ensign Beverly that Lucy is also working for Sir Lucius. But Lucy tells Fag that the letters are from Mrs. Malaprop. Then she tells Fag that his boss now has a new enemy that is even stronger, Absolute. Absolute is thrilled when Fag tells her that the woman he loves and the woman his father wants him to marry are the same person. Soon after, Absolute sees his dad on the North Parade and makes up with him. Absolute says he will marry any woman his father tells him to, no matter how old or ugly she is, but he doesn't say that he is already dating Lydia as Ensign Beverly. Absolute doesn't seem to care about how pretty his future wife will be, which makes Sir Anthony very angry. 
When Julia goes into her room, Falkland is already there. She asks Falkland why he doesn't seem excited to see her. He tells her that he claimed not to care about her because he had heard she was having a good time without him. She says she pretended to be happy so her friends wouldn't think he was to blame for her sadness. He feels better for a moment, but then he presses her again because he doesn't believe she really loves him and isn't just feeling like she has to marry him. She cries and leaves. Captain Absolute goes to Mrs. Malaprop's home to see her. He compliments her on how good-looking and brave he is, which makes her very happy. She pulls out a letter from Beverly, which is really from Absolute, and the two of them read it. In the letter, Beverly makes fun of Mrs. Malaprop's pretense and stupid use of language. She also says she will find a way for Lydia to see her, with Mrs. Malaprop acting as a go-between. Absolute and Mrs. Malaprop laugh at how rude this is, and then Absolute asks if he can meet Lydia. Mrs. Malaprop tells Lydia to come down and then leaves. She is shocked to see Beverly, her lover. He tells her that he pretended to be Absolute to get to see her. She is happy that he got her aunt to trust him. Mrs. Malaprop listens in on the two lovers' conversation, but she gets the wrong idea and thinks Lydia is being mean by turning down Absolute. She steps in and tells Lydia to leave the room. Sir Lucius shows up at Sir Akers's house, and Akers tells him that he came to Bath to follow Lydia, who is currently being courted by a man named Beverly. Sir Lucius talks Akers into challenging Beverly to a fight, even though there is no reason to do so. Akers is scared about what might happen, but he lets Sir Lucius help him write the letter of challenge. Sir Lucius says he might soon challenge a captain who spoke badly about Ireland. After some time, David tries to show his master why the letter of challenge shouldn't be sent to Beverly. Even though David's fears about the duel scare Akers, he is set on going through with it. When Absolute shows up, Akers asks him to give the letter to Beverly because he knows Absolute and Beverly are friends. Mrs. Malaprop is telling Lydia how great Absolute is, but Lydia thinks Mrs. Malaprop has only met Beverly and argues that Beverly is also lovely. Captain Absolute and Sir Anthony show up, but Lydia won't look at Captain Absolute. But she doesn't understand why her aunt doesn't notice that this man isn't the same as the one she met earlier. Absolute says he is too scared to speak when Sir Anthony asks him to, but he does know. He finally understands that his lie will be found out. He tells Lydia not to be shocked, but when she hears his voice, she yells Beverly. At first, Mrs. Malaprop and Sir Anthony think Lydia is crazy, but then they figure out Absolute lied to them all. Absolute lied when he said he didn't care about how beautiful his wife was. This makes Sir Anthony happy. Mrs. Absolute's letter making fun of Malaprop makes her very angry, but Sir Anthony wants them to leave the pair alone together. But Lydia is very angry that Absolute lied to her. She throws away a small picture of him that she was carrying and tells him she won't marry him. When Sir Absolute and Mrs. Malaprop come back in, they are upset to see a scene of anger instead of love. Absolute walks along the North Parade, grumbling about how his dreams have been dashed. Sir Lucius sees him and dares him to a duel without giving a reason. Absolute tries to figure out why Sir Lucius is acting the way he is, but fails. Still, he agrees to fight Sir Lucius that night. Sir Lucius leaves, and Absolute meets Falkland. Absolute tells him that Lydia turned him down and Sir Lucius dared him to a duel. He then asks Falkland to be his second in the fight. Yes, Falkland agrees. A worker shows up with a letter from Juliet to Falkland in which she forgives him for being bad. He felt terrible about hurting her, but now he thinks it's rude for her to forgive him without asking first. Absolute stops him because he can't take any more of Falkland's made-up troubles and leaves. Falkland tells himself that the fight has given him a new way to be sure that Julia loves him. Julia is told by Falkland that he needs to leave England because he may have killed someone in a fight. Julie tells him she wants to run away with him. He tells her to think about it, they might not have much money, and he might get more angry than ever. She still tells him she wants to be with him. 
Falkland tells her that he made up the story about the fight because he was so happy to have shown that her love was real. Julia is very angry. She tells him that this lie is the last straw and that she will not marry him anymore. After some time, Lydia walks in looking for Julia, whom she thinks will be able to persuade her to give back Absolute. It turns out that Julia already knew about Absolute's lie because Falkland told her about it. Lydia is mad about this, but she starts to think about the good times she had with Beverly. Julia tells Lydia that she doesn't want to laugh at her cousin's behavior and begs Lydia to be fair and not ruin a marriage that could be happy because of a whim. Then Fag comes in with Mrs. Malaprop and tells the women that there will be a fight between Falkland, Absolute, Sir Lucius, and Akers. Everyone runs off to stop it. Absolute does not see Sir Anthony as he waits for the fight. Absolute is able to hide the fact that he's going to fight a battle, but David runs up to Sir Anthony right after he leaves and tells him what's going on. They were in too much of a hurry to stop it. A little outside of town, on King's Meadow Fields, Akers and Sir Lucius wait for their opponents. When Sir Lucius says that Akers might be killed, Akers starts to lose his courage. Absolute method and Falkland approach. Sir Lucius thinks Falkland is Beverly, but Akers knows that neither of them is Beverly. Sir Lucius then asks Akers to fight Falkland instead of Beverly, but Akers says no. Absolute says he is ready to fight Akers instead of Beverly because Beverly was just a fake name he had made up. Akers still doesn't want to fight. Sir Lucius insults Akers by calling him a wimp, and Akers doesn't fight back. When Sir Lucius and Absolute start to fight, the other figures rush in. Sir Anthony asks how Absolute got to fight, but he doesn't get an answer. Lydia is scared, Mrs. Malaprop says, and she tells Lydia to tell Absolute that she still loves him. Sir Lucius speaks up and says he can explain Lydia's silence. Lydia then speaks up and says she loves Absolute. Sir Lucius then pulls out a love letter from Delia and asks Lydia if she wrote it. Lydia says she didn't write it, and Mrs. Malaprop says she is Delia. There is no way that Sir Lucius wants to marry Mrs. Malaprop, and he gives up his claim to Lydia. Akers says he will throw a party for the newly engaged couples, and Sir Anthony tells Julia to marry Falkland, saying that his jealousy will go away after they get married. About the author Richard Brinsley Sheridan was born in Dublin, Ireland, but when he was eight years old, he was brought to England and never went back. He went to a British boarding school. His mother was a famous playwright and novelist, and his grandfather was friends with Jonathan Swift. Soon after Sheridan graduated from boarding school, he moved to Bath with his family. It was there that he met Elizabeth Linley, a famous and beautiful young singer, and they fell in love. He went on to marry her after a series of scandalous duels that captivated British society. Not having enough money, he wrote The Rivals in 1775. The play was not well received at first, but it was improved and went on to be a huge hit. He went on to own the famous Drury Lane Theatre after being offered a job as manager of it because of this work. In the end, his dad ran the theatre as the boss. It was important for Sheridan to be a gentleman which meant leaving the world of theater. After writing a few more plays, including his other great work, The School for Scandal, 1777, he bought a seat in Parliament with the money he made from the plays. For the next 32 years, he worked in different government jobs and became one of the most recognized speakers of his time. In December 1815 Sheridan became ill and was largely confined to bed. He died in poverty. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.